Welcome, St. John's. We're so glad to have you here today. Let us begin with the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. For the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ has given to die for us, and for his sake he forgives us all of our sins. As a called minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. God, our creation, the resurrection of your Son offers life to all the peoples on earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle us the fire of your love, empower our lives and ser for service and our tongues for praise through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns for you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First lesson reading comes to you today from Genesis 22 verses 1 through 14. God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, 
who you love and go to the land of Morai and offer him with at, there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and sent out and went and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar and there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from, from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. The angel said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord will provide as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Here ends the first lesson. A reading from Psalms, Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give me light to my eyes as I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. And I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Here ends the Psalms. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation, which you experienced when you patiently endured the same suffering that we are also suffering. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that we are, that you share in our suffering, so also you share in our consolation. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, of the affliction we experience in Asia, for we were so utterly, unbearably crushed that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death so that we would rely not on ourselves, but on God who raised the dead. He who rescues us from so deadly a peril will continue to rescue us. On him we have set our hope 
that we will rescue us again, or that he will rescue us again. And you also join in helping us by your prayers so that many will give thanks on behalf for the blessings granted us through the prayers of many. Here ends the second reading. Good morning. The Holy Gospel for this Sunday is recorded by St. Matthew in chapter 10. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says to the 12 disciples, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in my name, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Holy Gospel. Thanks be to God. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace. And welcome to all of you who are watching online and those of you who are present in the church sanctuary today. I'm going to record my homily today in a couple of installments. And you can see that I'm here in the narthex, the entryway to the sanctuary, uh, for a couple of important reasons. First, uh, this is the Sunday where the sanctuary is now open again so that those uh, who wish to, to come into the sanctuary for worship may do so. I want to say a quick word, by the way, of welcome, and we understand that not everyone is going to feel comfortable or choose to come into the sanctuary uh, immediately for worship. Uh, it may take some time, in fact. And so we just want to lift up again. I know I've said it before that we honor everyone's, uh, everyone's own decision, everyone's choices, uh, and that is your prerogative, and, and that's a godly choice that, that you would make. So welcome, whether you are here in the sanctuary today, or whether you are watching online or listening on the radio or looking at us on cable TV, so thank you. Now I'm here in the narthex because I wanna show you particularly uh, one of my most favorite pieces of stained glass. It's, it's the stained glass window uh, in this door. Of course, it is the Christian symbol of the anchor. That is to say that in our Lord Jesus Christ, we find uh, someone to whom we can anchor not just our earthly lives, uh, not just our, 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 our temporal life, but also our eternal soul, because it is in Christ, the one in whom we find refuge, the one in whom we, we take sanctuary, it is in Christ that we are also able to come into safe harbor. And so there is no better example of this than the mariner's Christian symbol, that of the anchor. So you can see in this anchor here, uh, there is the cross of Christ. Uh, either point of the anchor is, is uh, perhaps reminiscent of the point of the nails that pierced Christ and the spear that went into his side. But we know that it's because of his death, his sacrifice, that, that we find peace with God, the forgiveness of our sins, and the promise that amidst all the storms and turbulence of life, that we will find safe harbor. And so today I want to talk a little bit about what it means uh, to anchor ourselves in the Christian bedrock of faith, to come into that safe harbor where we find that, that God's good news comes to us in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, uh, both in the gospel and in the law we find that God lays out for us a safe harbor. And so with that, I want to transition for just a moment to the second reading from 2 Corinthians. This is where St. Paul, in opening uh, his letter to the Corinthian church, this is where St. Paul first gives glory to God. And then he tells the Corinthians, he wants them to be mindful that the experience of Christian suffering is not unique to them, that they should not feel that God has forgotten them or abandoned them uh, in their suffering. Paul says, in fact, our hope for you is, is, is never floundered. It never fails. Uh, our hope for you is sure and steadfast, and it will come to fruition. 
And to give them the encouragement of an example, of a common example, St. Paul says, when you think about our own story as the missionaries, Paul and his friends, they meant at one point to go over into Asia Minor, what is now present-day Turkey. And they found that they were hindered. In fact, uh, they were prevented. And they had such difficulty and such trouble, Paul writes, that they despaired even of life itself. They felt that they had received a death sentence. And yet they found that even in the midst of their great, great, terrible struggles and, um, uh, and adversity, they found that God was faithful. And so if God would be faithful to them, so also Paul declares that God will be faithful to the Corinthians, and God also is faithful to all Christians throughout the world, throughout all time. So it is that we know that we can find safe harbor in God. And so we put down our anchors uh, into that place, into that person of Jesus Christ, uh, by whom we can, we can go through those storms, those adversities, those persecutions, those trials, those difficulties, and those sufferings in this first life. It's not as though those sufferings and difficulties disappear. They do not. But amidst all of the chaos that would swirl around us in this world, we know that there is safety, that ultimately God has won the victory, and that our hope in him will not come to naught. So peace be with you, dear friends in Christ. And now, bear with me for a minute, because I'm going to transition to my office, and I want to show you a little bit more about how the anchor is meant to keep us safe in God's sanctuary, in the harbor of Christ's love. Watch for just a minute now. Okay, good morning, kids. I'm here in my office now. Uh, this is part two of the sermon, and this is still part of the regular, the regular sermon, but kids, this part is especially for you. Uh, I've got my helpers today with me. They're off camera. You can't see them, but they're the sirens, and they're going to be making uh, storm noises and hurricane gale force winds and thunder and lightning and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, listen for those helpers, for those sirens. They're going to be in the background here in just a minute. I also want to say a really big thank you to History Worth Repeating, to the DeBoer family, because they provided this beautiful, this beautiful ship over here. Uh, again, thank you to Scott DeBoer and his family. Uh, this, uh, this, this, uh, this model can be found over on Main Street on uh, County Road 3, that is the highway. And their shop, again, is History Worth Repeating. So thanks again to the DeBoer family. It's just really fantastic. So, kids, you can see that now uh, we're going to keep talking about anchors. I've got this big 20-pound anchor right here. It's very heavy. And you can see that I've got this length of anchor cord attached to it. This is a simple rope, okay? And right now I want to demonstrate why a simple rope for an anchor is not very effective. Because when you have just a single rope, there's no stretch in the rope. There's no give. And so whenever the rope um, comes to tension like this, and whenever there's a big storm, then what's going to happen is as the storm blows against the ship, you're going to see this ship take a pounding because there's no elasticity. There's no give to the rope. And so the ship, the hardware on the ship is just bang, bang, bang. And so there's no give. And it's very hard on the ship. So even though the ship is in safe harbor, boy, it's not very good. After that, I want to show you a different solution. But let's start now with the rope. And so I'm going to come over here. And, okay, now we're in harbor, but there's this storm that's happening. Boom! And it's a hurricane. And the ship is going back and forth. Boom, 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 boom. And there's no give in the anchor rope. And so, and so the, the ship is taking just a pounding, even though it's in safe harbor. Now, let's try something else. Let's imagine, let's get rid of this, of this silly rope. And let's replace the rope with a length of chain. Now, I want to show you why the chain is far superior. Not only is it stronger, but it's also more gentle for the ship. Because instead of being 
strung tight the whole time like this, because the chain is heavy, when the wind stops blowing, the chain sinks back down to the floor of the ocean. And so can you see, can you see how the chain is curved? When the wind is blowing, it straightens the chain out little by little, just like that. But when the wind stops, it comes back gently like this. And so it's much more gentle on the ship. The wind blows and the chain lifts off the sea floor slowly, and then it finally comes to its full tension, and the wind stops, and it gently comes back down to the sea floor. Now, let's try this. Okay, so we'll get this attached into the anchor. Well, you'll be all ready to go boating this summer after this children's sermon, huh? All right, get our anchor attached. Okay, you can see it's real solid here. All right. Now, we'll attach it to the boat. Oh, it sounds like there's a storm that's already coming up. Oh, now, watch how it comes up off the, off the seabed. Nice and slow and steady. Nice and slow and steady. Until finally, even though the storm is raging in the background, now the storm subsides and the anchor chain comes back. So the wind blows. And the wind subsides. But the whole time... It is a gentle tug, not a sharp pull. The most important part of all of this, kids, is that while Jesus is our anchor, he's the one who provides us safe harbor, the anchor chain is just as important because all of the links of this chain, can you see the links there? All the links of that chain, you can imagine this to be the people of God. And we're all attached to one another. And all of us go back through the whole history of the church, all the way back to Jesus himself. And so we've got this long chain of the people of God who are linked arm in arm together and standing strong together. It's not as though the storms of life just go away. They're still here. But now because we stand arm in arm right, and we're linked to one another in the church, and the church links us all the way back to Jesus. Now, we don't have to worry about those storms of life. And we've got safe harbor. So, be sure to stay connected to your brothers and sisters in Christ. Be sure to stay connected to the church. Be sure to stay connected to Jesus. Because when you are, then the storms can swirl around you. But we know that God keeps us safe in the harbor of the church and his son, Jesus Christ. Peace be with you, and God bless. Amen. Now, sirens, say goodbye.
Let us pray. God of companionship, can encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ, bless our conversations, shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join in worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Lord, be with all the farmers and the crops. Bring rain so our crops might flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, abandoned, and especially Tyler, Audrey, Dieter, Ron, Naoma, Stu, Ron Schultz, Tim, Bob, Alex, Mel, Robin, Vern, Lily, Walker, Cade, Dylan, and Moni. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each of you and each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those to us deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.